it's sometimes important to um, understand when is the right time to change a requirement. Um, sometimes uh, if it's just a, a, I think I would like to change this language to make it clearer, sometimes I don't know if we should be really, you know, you end up finding out sometimes that a requirement, um, you, it's like economists. Engineers can look at something, and, and we're all people, and so just a different lens sometimes creates people to have like a different perception. What I end up finding out is sometimes you had to, you had to stop that editorial um, comments on the requirements and really keep it down to, is there a major technical change to this requirement or not? Because um, you would get a new requirement owner, and they would then start um, changing parts of the requirement that I'm not sure really change the overall technical explanation of the requirement or understanding of the requirement. I, I would tell folks, you know, if you want to, um, instead of continuing to mess with the, the language, what we really should be doing is, is expanding on the requirement in requirement interpretation letters or providing more technical understanding of, of the intent behind the requirement. I think that tends to be more helpful to the providers than, um, you know, coming in with requirements changes because at some stage they are baselining their design and their design sets based on a requirement set that then they've traced to, right? And so if, if really technically um, it's not changing the intent of it, at some point you're just creating more paperwork for, for folks that are, that are working in that mission phase. Um, you know, what, what working through the COTS program and then working through CRS, what I learned is, you know, every single thing we do, we really have to be balancing what is the impact, what's the, what's the effort and the gain for every change that we're making, right? And because if, if the industry partners having to react to it, that means that they're not doing something else, right? And so, and that something else could be spending more time on their vehicles or spending more time on their designs or making more progress on, on them actually providing and demonstrating the capability that you absolutely need. And so as a, as a team, we have to always be very careful about how we engage, how we are using that, that industry partner's resource and making sure that that's really you know, the, the minute you're spending with them, the, the thing you're asking them to do, is it really either making the vehicle safer? Is it really helping them? Or is it kind of, is it creating more work for them? And, and, and these kind of relationship and these partnerships, um, it, it sets that kind of a balance and mindset in place when, when you're, you're working these kinds of things.